you don't count this fucking TV set. Of course, all over this country, with a new special that came out this year. Put your hands together. Make a lot of noise. Get it out of my man. Head. 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 To the Ted Alexandro Show, episode one. Oh, yes. Doesn't it feel good just to be together? Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are live from the studio headquarters in Astoria, Queens. And all is going well, folks. Uh, I cannot believe that we are finally here. We are launching the Ted Alexandro Show. I am uh, excited, but I am also uh, thrilled to be, um, I'm also, I'm hearing technical difficulties, folks. I'm hearing myself in, in my headphones. So that is, um, it's fun for me because I'm getting to hear, there we go. I'm getting to hear myself as I do the show. Maybe what I will do is take them off, just so I am with you. Aha. <laughs> Here we go. I think, how is that? Yes, folks. That, uh, we have located the issue. And I feel, I feel centered. I feel better. How do you feel? <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Ted Alexandro Show. Episode one, episode zero, zero, one. How many zeros would you like to place in front of it? Whatever, whatever your choice is, this is the first. This is the inaugural, the, uh, the beginning, the inception. We are ready for takeoff. In fact, we have taken off. This is, uh, what is it? What is it you're asking? What am I watching? I used to be a stand-up comedian. I was in showbiz for a number of years. That number is not important. As you can see, I'm still, I'm still learning as I go. But what is important is that we're here together. And this is a culmination of sorts. A culmination of decades of stand-up comedy, which is now dead. Long live stand-up comedy. So I, uh, it's funny because people say- It's not like, important. Are you, are you missing stand-up comedy? People say to me, do you miss the stage? The answer is no. <laughs> I don't know if it's because uh, my wife and I have a six-month-old baby boy. Uh, I don't know if it, I've, I've just- taken to wearing masks when I leave my home so that I don't want to um, ever take it off once I'm out of my home. But whatever the reason is, I am not pining to do stand-up comedy ever again. In fact, <laughs> this, might, this might serve as my retirement ceremony. You know, why not? Why not? I'm, I'm getting out. And every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Oh, but not this time, folks. This time, this time I know it's for real. To quote the legend, Donna Summer. <laughs> and maybe that gives you some inclination of what you're in for with this Ted Alexandro show, with this live stream, with this podcast. It is... Uh, it, it is kind of a, a culmination of uh, an amalgamation of all of the things that I've been doing, uh, my podcast, which is now this. So if you're saying, where is a little bit me? You're watching it. You're looking at it. You're tasting it. You're touching it. Maybe you're smelling it. I don't know what, what technology you have access to. But if you, if you are, <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting quite a nice, quite a nice scent wafting your way from the screen. If in, if in fact, that's how this new technology that I've conjured works. 
So the Ted Alexandro Show, I will be live streaming every Monday and Thursday. Today is Thursday, so maybe I'll say every Thursday and Monday. You get it. You know, are, are, you, still, are you still operating within that paradigm? Are you still operating within the days of the week? Do you adhere to that? Have you switched to something else? The Mayan calendar. Um, why not, right? What, wasn't the Mayan calendar predicting... Uh, uh, the end of the world. So maybe the Mayan, maybe we should all switch back to Mayan. Maybe, yes, I will be, I will be, if Google calendars has a Mayan button, I will be uh, shifting to the Mayan calendar, assuming they still believed in Mondays and Thursdays. But what you need to know, Mayan or, or otherwise, make some noise, Mayans. That is one thing that I've had to, uh, <laughs> that is one thing that I've, when you've been doing comedy for, uh, you know, I started in 92, 1992, uh, Year of Our Lord, as part of a duo. I was, I was part of a duo, Hollis James and I had, had a duo for a couple of years. And then in 94, I started proper as a solo, uh, in August of 1994. So I guess that means I'm a month from my, what, is, what does that make? Uh, 26th anniversary as a, as a solo stand-up comedian? So yeah, when, you, when you've been doing comedy, even for six months, let alone 26 years, uh, you get a lot of these like uh, conventions of stand-up comedy, like some, make some noise. Like I, I just go around the house now, you know, it's like a, it's like a Tourette's, like make some noise. You guys ready to laugh? <laughs> I asked my wife and son, y'all ready to laugh? There's certain, certain things about being a stand-up comic that it's like PS, uh, PTSD, like you can't shake them. You know, I say, how about a round of applause for, for your mom? She gave birth to you six months ago, you know, things like that. I can't hear you. You know, you like you, I'm insistent. Uh, so like some of those things are going to take, you know, forgive me. I, I'm going to, it's going to take a while for me to shed those stand up conventions. But that will be part of the Ted Alexandra show. You will be able to discern. This guy seems as though he might have done stand up comedy at some point. It's true, I did. That was a long time ago, all right? In a pre-pandemic world, if you can imagine such a thing. In fact, some of you may even not know what stand-up comedy, maybe like how much, how much backstory do you guys need? Once upon a time, in a world far, far away, pre-COVID, COVID-19, for those of you who use the full on those of you on formal terms with the virus. Once upon a time, people would congregate. Uh, the, the numbers, uh, wh wh whatever the fire code said, it was probably 10 more than that. <laughs> uh, so it could be, gosh, in a, in a comedy club, you, you, you could be talking hundreds of people, hundreds of, of, of human beings congregating amongst strangers, folks they didn't know. Maybe they knew a handful if it was a bachelorette party or some sort of, some sort of event which they decided mistakenly to celebrate at a, at a stand-up comedy venue. The thing I love about stand-up comedy, if I can digress, and I will come back eventually, the thing I love about stand-up comedy is it gets zero respect whether you've been doing it for 26 years, 46 years, or six minutes. Uh, people generally don't care. You know, they're, they're more important, and what they're out celebrating is more important than you, the performer. So if there are any comedians out there, or once comedians, or maybe hoping <laughs> foolishly to one day no, you have my blessing. There is a spot opening up. Uh, if, you, if you harbor uh, 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 notions 
or dreams of becoming a stand-up. Just know, and this is a good thing, by the way, know that you do not matter at all. Uh, people are indifferent to you being there. They are there mostly for wings, for beer, for drinks, uh, for, for a reminder that they are human. You're part of that. You're part of that. You're up, you come up on stage for 15, as many as 20 minutes. <laughs> or if you're headlining 30, 60, you know, those of you who choose to blow the light, that's an option too. I never did. I never did in my 26 years. I'm sure I did, but it, I pulled one of those. Was that the light? <laughs> Write that down, young aspiring comedians. Your acting, your finest acting work will be when you claim to have not seen the light. Oh, was that the, the, the big red, the big red thing? I, I, I didn't know. I thought that was uh, a gel. I thought that was part of the stage lighting that came on 20 minutes into my set. <laughs> so the point is this, folks. Welcome to the Ted Alexandro Show. This is what it's going to be. Me meandering. Me making peace to a tw with a 26-year career spent in, 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 in basements, in, in shady surroundings, trying to get through to people, trying to say, look, I get, I get that this is your bachelorette party, but I'm working on a new joke about the national anthem. <laughs> Do you see the absurdity of it, folks? Picture. Picture yourself on stage, okay? I'm going to ask you to take a trip. Take a little trip with me. A little imagine, a, a, a little, uh, use your imagination and journey with me. You are on stage in front of, some nights it'll be 25. <laughs> some nights as many as 300. There's a table right down front. You notice visibly the genders of these this this party appears to be all female a lot of them are wearing hats on their heads with phalluses phallies phallases that's that's a word that does come to mind phallic symbols penises as you know, coming out, maybe sometimes a bouquet, sometimes a bouquet of penises, peni. And, and, and you discern that they are celebrating one of, of the women's impending nuptials. She will have a veil and maybe also a penis. Are you picturing her? Are you, this is you. I'm not, this is not my gig. This is your gig. It's, it's Saturday night. They're excited. They want everyone in the room to know that someone is getting married. All right? Now you picture, and now not to be sexist, just to balance things out on the other side of the room, there's a table of 15 dudes already drunk, already drunk. And, and, and Gary is, is getting no, I love it. There's, I have, I love several Garys. It's just the name that popped into my mind. <laughs> Gary is, is getting married and his friends are all celebrating by getting drunk. You have to get on that stage. You, not me. This is your gig again. And you have to somehow, you have to, you have to make a whole of the, of the fabric of this humanity because why are they there? Yes, they're there to laugh. They probably got free tickets. Um, it's one of the things they'll be doing that night. It's the first thing they're doing that night. So you are a mere, just a, a box to be checked. You're the start of the night. So please just get through it. Allow them to disrupt as much as, as, much as they'd like allow Gary and the boys to, to whoop it up. Anytime uh, anything is, is mentioned that they think applies to them, they will let the room know. So these are the things that you, young comedian or old comedian, old person, will have to figure out if and when the pandemic ever ends. <laughs> I'm out.
but I will impart my wisdom to you. So look, my point is this. I don't care about stand-up comedy. <laughs> I've done it a long time and I'm not missing it. I have a new, I have a baby. He's the headliner. I have a, a six month old baby boy. He's headlining every day. Sometimes I get bumped entirely. Happy to have it happen. So uh, being a dad is, is, is the focus right now and starting this new venture, this new journey, the Ted Alexandro show. You may know me from my standup. You may know me from a little bit me, my podcast. You may know me from Teddy Grams. Hello, Teddy Grammers. It's, it's all the same. It's all, it's all just humanity. As I said, standup comedy essentially is a chance for people to be reminded that we're all human beings. It's a communal experience. Funny, not funny, uh, somebody bombs, somebody kills. What is stand-up comedy? It is a chance to be in a room, a chance that we've been denied for many years unless you're insane and you've been going out in such circumstances. <laughs> I don't get it if you have. Uh, stand-up comedy at its essence, it's a chance to, to feel alive, right? Every, every other part of life, is, is someplace you'd rather not be, right? Probably work, uh, driving someone somewhere, right? Isn't that like 30% of life? Driving someone somewhere or being driven somewhere or being on a vehicle. That's 30% of life, I think. I think I read that somewhere. So stand-up comedy is just, uh, what it is, is, is an opportunity to feel like, Geez, who's that? Who's that guy? Ooh, they're they're weird, right? That's that's what that's why you're there. That's a weird table. I guess she's getting married. Good luck. So's Gary, you know that kind of thing. So it's just a chance to drink and to to you know. And I look, I'm not shitting on it. comedy. Is a beautiful thing. I had a good run. We all did. <laughs> But, you know, the world is, is, is on fire, as, as people have been saying. And it has been for a while, okay? We just didn't notice because we were, we were in stand-up comedy venues, two, two to 300 people at a time. We didn't know. We were being distracted by our phones and by, oh, I blame, com I blame comedy. <laughs> when in doubt, blame comedy, blame the comedians. Certainly, we have not been focused on things that matter. And if anything, these last several months have been <laughs> jamming things that matter, if you will, uh, down our throats and into our vision, and rightfully so. So uh, this, is, this is a very long way of welcoming you to the Ted Alexandro Show. <laughs> What, why am I excited about this? I'm excited because I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It, it is still that reminder. I'm, I'm still aware that we're human beings on this big blue marble and sharing the ride together, trying to make sense of it all. And that's what we'll be doing here. That's what we'll be doing here. We will be navigating uh, the day-to-day. -day. We will be figuring out... Uh, you know, what, what, what the hell is going on, basically? What the hell is going on? So uh, every Monday and Thursday, the Ted Alexandro Show will be live streaming. Uh, you can support this new venture uh, through my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Ted Alexandro. And thank you to all of you who have already done that. I will be uh, shouting out some Patreon members, some subscribers, a little bit later in the show. So thank you to uh, the dozens of people who already have signed up to support the show, to support the work we're doing here. Uh, I could not do it alone. I am uh, joined as always with my producer extraordinaire, Matthew L. Weiss, who has, has produced my specials, uh, directed my specials. Uh, he and his wife, Mary, uh, co-produced, co-directed, 
uh, several of my specials. Uh, so this is a, uh, th this is a joint venture and, and people are, have, have helped me all throughout, you know, all along the journey. And certainly that will be the case with this as well. So if you are able and inclined, please, uh, go to patreon.com slash Ted Alexandro and make a contribution at, at whatever level you feel, uh, you're able to, and there's lots of cool, lots of cool prizes and, uh, prizes, <laughs> Lots of cool rewards. Go there and you're going you're gonna to need a coin. All right? You're going to need a coin. You're going to scratch the back of your computer. All right? And you're going to see if you, have, if you have three microphones, and then you win a prize. <laughs> so, folks, let's, uh, let's dive in. My goodness. My goodness. What's been going on? My wife and I, I have to start, I have to start with the story. My wife and I recently had a fight. <laughs> have you had any pandemic fights? If you're in a relationship, not even in a, if you have a roommate, what, whatever your situation is, I hope you have had a couple of nice pandemic fights to get into it, you know, to, you got to live, right? Just like stand, just like stand up comedy is an opportunity to feel alive. So is a good fight. This was not a, this was not a, a huge fight, but it was big enough that I, <laughs> I left or was asked to leave the apartment. Uh, we we were arguing about something, and I think it was just actually, to be perfectly honest, it was one of those we've spent so much time together over the past. How, how many years has this pandemic been? We've spent so much time, you know? And uh, my wife and I periodically are reminded that we need time and space to, to, to operate and to live our own lives independent of one another and to, and to float freely. So we had a fight. Excuse me. So this fight led to me leaving the apartment to go for a walk right? Blow off some steam. Just, just get out of the, I find that helpful. All right. Relationship tip, you know, not, not that you storm out, but that you say, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a walk. <laughs> was that so bad? I think that, that was my, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, so I went for a walk. I went for a walk. But, oh man, with technology now, right? The fight continues by text. <laughs> so we're texting each other. My wife is coming at me. She's sprinkling it with some all caps. She's coming at me hard. I had it in my head. You know what? I'm outside. The birds are chirping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own it. I'm going to come back with, uh, with, with love, with acceptance. You're right. I'm sorry. That's true. That's true. That's a good one, right? That's, that's so true. You're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you know, so she's coming and all of what she's saying is justified, by the way. I'm not saying like she was wrong. I'm saying I just had that mode. You ever get in that mode of like, I'm just going to hit him with, uh, with affirmations. You're right to feel that way. I have been behaving that way. It is wrong. I'm on board with all of it. And it's so much easier when you're texting it, right? You're just, you're just texting it out. <laughs> so we're going at it. We're going back and forth for, it, it had to be, you know, it felt like maybe 10 minutes. And then my wife suddenly texts me in all caps. Oh my God, <laughs> I've been texting your mother. My mother was on the entire text chain because we had been texting with my mom, I guess, you know, about something else. And for whatever reason, I guess when it came, when, when my wife started this text chain, it was the three of us. <laughs> it was my wife and I and my mom just, just having it out, just, just working through it, you know, like you do with your mom and your wife. <laughs> so we laughed and laughed and laughed 
My, did we laugh? Uh, yeah, we just actually, I immediately called her because it was so hilarious, you know, and we were both laughing so hard. And in a way it was, it was a gift. It was a gift because it took us out of the fight and out of the, you know, you get so, you get so into the, uh, the fighting and the, the winning and the, you know, expressing, um, so yes. So then I said, you know, we, <laughs> we've got to call my mom. Now, those of you who, who know my mother and my father for that matter, know that they're as loving, uh, you know, as, as, as people can be, as a couple can be, but as individuals, uh, they're, they're both very loving, very supportive, very easy, great senses of humor. So this is not like, oh my God, you know, it's, of course, it's embarrassing and uh, <laughs> horrifying, even more so for my wife, because she, and mind you, because I felt great because I, I, I felt as though like the jury would have all the evidence they needed to acquit. <laughs> I felt like I uh, acquitted myself quite nicely. I was, I was, you know, I never used all caps for starters, Your Honor. <laughs> and uh, my tone was always cordial. I was con consistently, continually offering olive branches one after another. Uh, so I felt, you know, I could, let's put it this way. I couldn't have handled it any better had I known my mom was on the text. <laughs> you know, if I knew, I would have answered the exact same way. That's how proud I was of my communicating techniques. But, it, you know, it was just, a, it was luck. It was dumb luck because there have been times where I've, I've been the all caps or I've sprinkled in the occasional, uh, <laughs> the, the occasional, um, you know, cuss. <laughs> uh, so I, I felt, you know, I was like, sure. Yeah, no, uh, let's call. I said, let's call my mom because it, a it's, it's hilarious. And B let's, you know, <laughs> let's tell her what the hell's going on. So she doesn't, she doesn't worry. So we called my dad picked up and you know, my dad has a cell phone, but I don't think he's used it since the, the, the late nineties. So he's unaware of even what's going on. He just thinks we're calling to say hi. And uh, we say, dad, we need to talk to mom. <laughs> we, we explain to him uh, what's been going on, uh, that we've been fighting and uh, mom has been involved. <laughs> so he laughs, of course, and uh, reassures us, you know, that, it, that it's fine. It's nothing. And puts my mom on. My mom also laughs and reassures us, you know, my, my, my wife is horrified. She explains, she says, I'm sorry about the all caps. <laughs> I say, um, what did you think of my responses? Were they not, for the most part, you know, healthy, healthy communication? Did I not send I messages? No. So we just, we had a, we had a good laugh. And as I said, like you, my wife in her, in her position, she could have not asked for a better, more understanding mother-in-law than my mom, because my wife, my mom has a great sense of humor. Uh, she is, you know, very understanding about, in fact, she reassured us and said that she and my dad who have been married for 54 years, just had a big fight, uh, you know, like, in the past week where uh, they went to bed uh, back to back. And I was concerned. I said, are, are, you, are you guys okay? That does not sound healthy to us. You know, so the shoe was suddenly was on the other foot and we were in the role of counselor. Um, so no, it was just, it was funny to, <laughs> to realize, uh, first off, I was, you know, we felt like it was divine intervention. We felt like the angels came down and said, why are you fighting over text? This is ridiculous. You just need, obviously, you just need a little break. You need a little air. Uh, I'm going to include your mother in this text. So uh, thank you to the angels and mostly to my mom <laughs> uh, for 
loving us as always and for uh, reassuring us that <laughs> that it's just part of the game. 54 years or, or coming up on three. So that was, uh, that was the excitement for the past week. A fight over text with mom. Uh, I wanted, speaking of texts, folks, viewers, I wanted to let you know that part of this Ted Alexandro show experience will be the opportunity for you to text me. Not my mother. She will not be included as part of the deal. However, friends, you can text me and, and I will... I'm told it, it. I'm told it's up on the screen, on the lower third, as we say in the biz. Uh, you can text me at 909-575-0737. That's the number that I just said. 909 is the beginning, and then you can read the rest. So please text me, and I will be answering those a little bit later in the show. Oh yes, folks. Now we're cooking. 909-575-0737, my friends. So text me, uh, you, have, you ever, have you ever thought to yourselves, if only I could text a, uh, a stand-up comedian of some note. If only I could, uh, you know, pick up my telephone, my, cell, my cellular, my mobile, and text, if I had access, isn't that what life is about, access? If I could have access to a comedian and, 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 and find out what they're thinking, what they're doing, or, or even just, you know, pepper them with some questions. Well, today is your lucky day, friends. You can text me at 909-575-0737. Seven. I will be answering those questions a bit later on in the show, so keep those texts coming in. Could you hear my bell ringing? You remember that song? You can ring my bell. The, uh, the, the bell is off. I'm in silent mode, friends. Oh, yes. Those, those texts are rolling in, and I will get to them. But before we do... I would like to shout out a few of the Patreon members and those of you watching, you can become a Patreon member, a subscriber uh, at any of the levels being offered, either of the levels being offered. Uh, but I would like to shout out a few of you who have already donated our very first patron, 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 isn't that the word? Our very first patron who will win fabulous prizes should he or she scratch off and get three microphones. Uh, our very first is simply known as what? So what is the, is there a better, is there a better initial patron than what? I love it. So a shout out to what, as in what the hell's going on, right? I mean, I don't mean to take liberties with your name, but Thank you, What. I think that name is actually the perfect name and the perfect first patron. So thank you, What. Allison Conforti, thank you in Hawaii, the big island. Pat Alexandro. <laughs> Some of these names might be familiar to you. Uh, you know, if you, she, she actually won uh, the prize that she won was a, uh, she was privy to a, a, a text fight. So that is one of the, that is just one of the many rewards that you will find on our Patreon page, tedalexandro.com slash Patreon. You could be smack dab in the middle of a text fight between my wife and I. <laughs> uh, Pat Alexandro got to experience that firsthand. And let me tell you, it is one hell of a ride. Pete Dominic, my buddy, shout out. Everybody should be listening to Stand Up with Pete, a great comedian, and he does a great show that I have been a frequent guest on. Shout out to Pete Dominic. 
all of these folks, I mean, it just warmed my heart that people were uh, willing to support what we are building here. We're building a community, folks. This isn't just a, this isn't, uh, this isn't about money, okay? Money is not real. I think if anything ha has been made clear during this pandemic, it is that money is not real, but my Patreon page is. So thank you to those of you who have been supporting. Uh, Pete Dominic, Kimberly, Hereford, Hereford, Kimberly, thank you. Shout out to all of you. And, and we will continue to shout out all the folks who have been, uh, who have been uh, supporting the Patreon. And uh, folks, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, and wherever you happen to be watching, please just hit subscribe, follow, like, because that, what that does is it fools the algorithm. At least that's what I'm told. Um, I've been busy during the, during the pandemic. You know, I, I, I tend to be self-deprecating uh, about stand-up comedy, and I don't take it too seriously. I try not to take myself too seriously, though I am an artist. And I have been busy during the pandemic. Uh, I've put out two comedy specials during the pandemic. What the hell have the rest of you been doing? That's really what the Ted Alexandro show is about. It's meant to make you feel inadequate, wh whether you're in the arts, whether you're in comedy. My real goal is to make you feel as though you have not been maximum. You know, a lot of self-help now is like encouraging and like, it's okay, you know, it's a long journey, you know, be good to you. No, this is a, this is a new spin on self-help. This is, it's, it's going to be more of a, me uh, berating you and saying, look, I put out two specials during a pandemic. What's your excuse? I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> it just so happened that uh, I, I was working on one special and then the pandemic happened. And then I put out, uh, you know, I said, hey man, let's make a special of this. So I put out Stay at Home Comedian, which you can watch on YouTube for free. Uh, Stay at Home Comedian was a, uh, kind of culled together by my producer extraordinaire, Matthew L. Weiss. He put together uh, this, this one hour special that was shot in my apartment. And uh, it was kind of a tongue in cheek stand up comedy special, but it was just musing on the, the bizarre circumstances of the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus pandemic. So thank you to, to all of the people and all the kind words about that, uh, that special, you know, and obviously, again, tongue in cheek special because, you know, whatever, but the New York Times found it worthy to write about. So, you know, make draw your own conclusions. So then after that came out after I was finished with that. Uh, and again, that was thanks to Matthew, because I said, Hey, man, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe putting together these Teddy Grams from Instagram and making a special. So that's what we did. Then once that was done, I had uh, all of this stand-up comedy material that was intended for a special to shoot. But I said, you know what? I've got all of the material shot from comedy clubs coast to coast. Why don't we cut this together and make a stand-up comedy special that is edited together from various locations? So that's what we did. And I put out Cut Up, which is my fifth comedy special. Those of you who are true fans, can you name all five? If you scratch the back of your card and you get, <laughs> if you get all five of my stand-up comedy specials, you win a prize. Um, my five specials, going back to as much as you want. I did it. Senior class of earth. Stay at home comedian. And now, cut up. I love this special. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that it came out during a pandemic. You know, like that to me, uh, it was just bizarre. Uh, but I love the special. I love what Matthew did with it. Uh, cutting together all of these uh, sets that I had done, uh, largely at the Comedy Cellar in New York City, the Village Underground, which is also owned by the Comedy Cellar. Uh, and then also in Portland, Oregon, 
uh, at Helium Comedy Club. So those were the three shows that, the, the three venues uh, that this comedy special was cut together and it's called Cut Up. It's available streaming everywhere to listen to, Spotify, wherever, Pandora, wherever you listen to your uh, music and comedy. And uh, the special itself, if you want to watch the special, it's available exclusively for now on my Patreon page. So uh, Patreon um, members, subscribers will uh, have first crack at that. And then probably uh, down the line, we will make that available to everyone. But we wanted to first exclusively make it available on my Patreon page. So that is where you can find Cut Up, the special, the video version of Cut Up. Uh, all right, folks. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, the world and what, what's been going on. Uh, for sure, your life has been impacted by all of the things that have been happening. Uh, the pandemic is such a, such a weird, wild ride. Is it not? Do you remember back to like, gosh, even like December, January, like when you first heard about it? And you heard about it in Wuhan, uh, China. You heard about it uh, as it made its way to Iran, Italy, Greece, right? And and being Americans, <laughs> we thought like uh, that's that's never gonna, you know, it's a shame what those people are going through. Never gonna make its way here. And has it ever? Has it ever? And you know. I mean, I think we as Americans are kind of arrogant to begin with. That's kind of just in our DNA. Like we, you know, we're kind of American exceptionalism is, is kind of imbued. We're imbued with that. So sure enough, you know, as the pandemic hit, everybody, you know, everybody from the president on down. And of course, he's the, he, is, he, is he not the perfect guy to f- fuck this up? <laughs> is he not the perfect guy to fuck this up i mean i could pick i could literally pick any other human being to guide us th- through this you know like um who would be who would be like somebody let's think of a of a, of a like mr t mr t mr t spent a lot of time on nbc as did Donald Trump. He was a, a, a sitcom actor, primarily in the, in the 80s, on the A-team. Uh, and then kind of just was famous as Miss, he was a personality, Mr. T, right? I think he did some wrestling, right? Didn't he do wrestling? He was in Rocky, was it three? I don't know. Uh, but I think he did some wrestling, as did Donald Trump was involved in that world. So Mr. T, why not Mr. T? Is his real name Lawrence Tews? Is his real name Lawrence Tews? T-E-W-E-S. Not to be confused with Jim Tews. Fantastic comedian. Follow Jim Tews everywhere he can be followed. Uh, So yeah, I think Mr. T, and I'm not even, this is not a joke. This is not me joking. All right. I know I used to be a comedian, but for God's sakes, take me at my word. I think Mr. T could do a better job guiding us through this pandemic than Donald Trump has. What am I basing that on? Everything I've seen from Mr. T, all of his work, his body of work. Didn't he have one called DC Cab? He had a movie. (laughs) I've seen scenes from that. Uh, he, he stood out. His work stood out in that. He was very believable. Look, Mr. T easily could do as good a job as Donald Trump, not only with the pandemic. Would Mr., what I'm trying to say is, Mr. T, would you please run an independent candidacy for the presidency of the United States of America in 2020. It's not too late. T2020. T, it's catchy. T2020. T2020. Join me. T2020. For God's sakes. 
He hasn't been accused of sexual assault or rape, has he? Like the other candidates? What, what, is, what, are, what are we doing? What exactly are we doing? Mr. T, he was, he was stamped. The answer, sometimes the answers are right in front of you the whole time. Mr. T can get us out of this mess. I pity the fool that doesn't think I can. <sighs> Let's go to the texts. They're, they're rolling in, by the way. That number again is, I think it's there. Man, I got a, I got a lot here. Woo. All right, folks. Uh, All right, here we go, folks. You've just done two late sets in the city. You are starving. And so you go to a local pizza place. They have a Sicilian pie. Are you going corner slice or middle? Wow. I thought we might ease our way into this. But you're hitting me with... You're hitting me with the good stuff right off the bat. This is a, this is a great question. And, and, and quite honestly, I've kind of eased up in, in, in more recent years because like that late night food, especially, you know, for comedians, that's, you have such adrenaline after you've navigated the bachelorette parties, the bachelor parties, you have such, the juices are flowing. You, you need to come down. How do you do it? You grab a slice, you grab a slice, you're right on the money. So that's a great question. So I have been trying to, you know, I'm like, if I get home, there's a veggie burger waiting for me. <sighs> but yeah, a lot of times, you know, you want to reward yourself with a slice. Am I going corner slice or middle? I'm going middle. And I'll tell you why. I'm going middle slice because uh, I don't like all that extra dough, you know? I I'm not a big dough guy. I like the cheese. I like to get to my cheese. I don't like any barriers to my cheese. So I don't want to, um, I don't want like to have to get over hurdles to get to my cheese. So that I, I look at those, if there's a double crust, you're talking corner, right? So corner is, corner slices are gonna have that double crust. Uh, to me, like that is, uh, it's wasted space. I just like a nice clean runway a nice clean cheese runway. So that's, that's me. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Uh, how about iced tea is a question. I don't know what, what that is in reference to, but I will tell you iced tea has been on fire. So follow, <laughs> follow iced tea. He's been putting a lot of great shit about black lives matter up. Um, he had something great about like, uh, people getting uh, rankled about like um, signs on the door saying masks only if you're trying to enter a, an establishment. And he juxtaposed that to like uh, to whites only. He's like, if you're having trouble with masks only, think for a moment how it must feel to have your very humanity denied, you know, back to the, the days of whites only in this country, not that long ago in my fucking lifetime. This country, you know, Ooh, don't get me started. Anyone, anyone who's resisting Black Lives Matter, I want to get, if Mr. T can get me access, look, I'm a pacifist, all right? So I should have said that up top. This is a, essentially a pacifist comedy podcast. I know it's been done. <laughs> um, I'm not, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So that, that's really, I want you to feel the love always, always behind everything I'm saying. But I do want to get into a steel cage match with anyone who is in any way questioning Black Lives Matter, you know? And in that steel cage, I will dissect your, your, your flawed logic. You know, there will be no blows exchanged, but I will expose you for the racist that you are. And you might be on the, you might be on the spectrum, you know? You, well, I'm not a, you are. We all are. If, if you've been raised up in these United States, surrounded by statues of white men who did bad things. You're racist. And I'm including myself, all right? So calm down. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, 
Oh, yes. Jay writes, congrats on your retirement. Thank you, sir. My prediction is Jim Gaffigan's tours attendance will now drop dramatically. Oops, I think I have your mom on this text chain too. Uh, <laughs> we can call her. We'll call her after the show and explain what happened. Well, that's kind of you. Uh, Jim's, Jim's numbers will not, will not be impacted. I can assure you of that. You know, Jim has been very kind to have me on tour for uh, six or seven years now. So uh, he has helped my numbers, if anything. Uh, but it's always funny because I feel as though like when Jim's fans find me, my numbers will spike. And then once they find out what I'm about, <laughs> those numbers go down. A percentage of people stay on for the ride. They, they bring that, they, you know, they bring that, the, the head, the, the roller coaster headpiece. You know what I'm, you know what I'm miming. <laughs> and then the guy comes and gives it a pull. So my thanks to any folks who found me via Jim's shows. Again, the ride of my life. Great. You know, I'm playing 15,000 people. Five of which stay on <laughs> for the full ride. So uh, thank you for that, Jay. Um, me for Prez. No, no. Uh, no, I don't believe in countries. So it's, it's tough for me with that message, you know. Uh, it's a bit of, a, 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 of an impediment to my candidacy to go out there and say, thank you, for, thank you for being here. I do not believe in countries or borders. I want to abolish the police. What did he say? I said abolish the police. You know, I was thinking about, uh, you know what's funny? I was thinking about um, how over the years, have any of you ever like uh, been given um, PBA cards? Any of you ever been given PBA cards? Police Benevolent Association, I believe it stands for. I have been given a number of those over the year. What those basically are, if you're not familiar, are get out of jail free cards if you're if you're driving all right picture me driving and uh whoop whoop that's the sound of the police uh but i have a pba card from an officer all right now i've over the course of my life i've probably gotten i'm gonna say four or five of these pb and like i'm not related to cops these are from like acquaintances, friends, you know, not people that I, that are in my life. Like every, these are just people like, Hey, you want a PBA card? I'm like, all right. So like when you get pulled over, you can show that and be like, yeah, I know officer, you know, I know that I know officer so-and-so we're cousins. You know, and I thought to myself, like, that's a, just another layer of like white, it didn't even occur to me back then, but I stopped using it a few years back. I, I honestly, I, I don't think I ever, I, maybe I used it once, but in recent years, having been involved in Black Lives Matter and stuff, you know, like you have, you have this education and you have this ongoing process of realizing the privilege with which you uh, are, are inundated with and that you grow up with. And that is just part of being white in America, especially a white male. And looking the way I do, you know, like I've said it before, I could be like Serpico. I'm like, look, I'm on the job. I'm, I'm chasing, I'm chasing, <laughs> chasing my mother. We, we had a text, we had a text fight earlier. Um, so I, my visage presents as, you know, I was in those, I was in those cultures. I was in sports culture, dude culture, bro culture, you know, so I, like a lot of these cops that are part of bro culture, you know, they see me, I flash the PBA card. Are we done here? But, you know, as I've gotten older, I've realized like that is like, I shouldn't have that. You know, how many, how many black people get PBA cards? I wonder, I wonder. And even if they had one, what good would it do? Right. I wonder. 
I wonder. So that, you know, that was something that dawned on me with, you know, just like there, there's so many layers of white privilege as, as if like I even needed that card, right? It's like, hey, I'm white. Did you, re did you realize that when you pulled me over? <laughs> I'm a white man. You have no business here. But if I needed to, I, you know, I pull out, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? I got, I got, <laughs> you know, I got as many as you need. So that was one thing. And another thing uh, was, and I, this, this was a news, I tweeted about this. There was a news story recently where it, it has uh, been brought to the light that participation in Black Lives Matter can exclude you from a jury pool. And I knew that to be true because it happened to me. You know, and I, I totally forgot about this. I've told my wife, I've told, you know, my family, some siblings, uh, some friends, uh, I've told people this story. And I actually, I should, I should have put it in a bit, you know, that's, that's the one thing I'll miss about not being a comedian anymore. This would make a good bit if I could ever figure it out. And this was my problem as a comedian that I was always trying to figure out how do I, how do I force the fact that I was excluded from jury duty for supporting Black Lives Matter into a comedy bit? The bachelorette party is going to love this one. Gary and the boys, there's probably four cops at that table. The bachelorette party is probably four of them are engaged and or married to cops. They're going to love this one. So I was, uh, this was, a, uh, I think, gosh, maybe between 20, I think Trayvon Martin was 2012, right? So it was sometime between Trayvon Martin's murder by George Zimmerman and, uh, and maybe Eric Garner's murder in, I believe, 2015 uh, by, by the NYPD. Daniel Pant Pantaleno or Pantaleo, whatever the hell his name was. Um, so I was summoned to jury duty sometime in there. I think it was after Trayvon Martin. So maybe 2013, maybe 2014. So I go, you know, I, I get the thing and I, I go. Do you guys go? <laughs> Some people don't go uh, or they make up lies or they rip them up. I don't know. I always go. I always feel like, you know, maybe I'll get a bit out of this if I think to, if I actually think to tell it. So uh, I go, I always like just being in like weird situations, right? And jury, nothing's really weirder than jury duty. It's like you, you, you have a job, you've been summoned to a job, you work somewhere for, you know, a day or as, as many days as they need you there. And for a comedian, I always find that it's inherently funny that I have to be somewhere. <laughs> you know, because comedians like, we never have to be anywhere, especially in the morning, you know, and until I became a father, like mornings didn't exist. But for jury duty, I would like have to wake up and like brush my teeth and, you know, I didn't put on a tie, but every, everything but that, you know, I'd go to, you know, do my civil, my civic duty. It was just funny. It was, it felt like a dream. It was, you know, I don't even believe in justice. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I didn't have to. All I had to say was that I had participated in the Black Lives Matter movement. They, part of the case was they asked about pro, the protest movements, and I think they, they mentioned Black Lives Matter. They mentioned uh, the protests. And I said, uh, yeah, that I had been involved in the Black Lives Matter protests. And, you know, so I, I had made it actually through the – so they start with this big pool. And then people, like, I guess you fill out something – and then it narrows. So I made that first round. And then I went to like a smaller room. And there were like maybe, gosh, I don't know, 20 of us, excuse me, in this, in this smaller room. And uh, then they, they asked, uh, they would call us up. There were two lawyers at a desk and they called us up one at a time. So I went up and they asked me, uh, you know, a bunch of questions and one of which was something having, I, can't, I don't remember the exact wording of it, but I do remember it was about Black Lives Matter and about the protests. And I said, yes, I had, par I had participated 
in in Black Lives Matter as someone who believes in it. <laughs> I put I was not a provocateur. I, I I was there as someone who staunchly, firmly believes and will forever believe and knows, in fact, that Black Lives Matter. I didn't say that, but I think they could feel it. So uh, I was dismissed, done. That was the end of my, <laughs> I was sent home. I was sent home. So that was what this article that broke this, I think there's some sort of lawsuit right now uh, where they're saying it's, you know, I don't know if it's unconstitutional or whatever the term is, it's illegal. The things they've been doing to winnow the jury pool have been illegal. So yeah, I had that happen to me. I had that happen to me. So it, so you know, like again, like this is these are like the little things, right? Like the big things are someone being murdered. The big things are someone being murdered, an innocent, unarmed citizen being murdered by the police. That is the that is, on the scope of of injustices and and, and white supremacy. That is the stark end of, of, of things. But the small end of white supremacy is me getting f- four PBA cards. So I can, I, can deal, I can deal everybody in, you know? The, the other end of it is, is me going to, to jury duty and, and getting dismissed because I believe that black lives matter. <laughs> that, that, is, that is not welcome in a court of law, in a jury pool. The fact that I had participated in a social justice movement precluded me from taking part in, 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 in justice, in the justice, in the justice system. It, can it be any more clear than that? Because obviously my participation in Black Lives Matter uh, shows that, that, I, that I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> So these are these are the these are the things that our world is uh, is grappling with, folks. And honestly, you know, uh, I think it's it's important, and I, I hope that it just continues. You know, the the statues coming down. Obviously, those symbolic things are great because you don't even realize, right? I was thinking the other day about like just navigating New York City. The number of white, powerful white men, w- rich, wealthy, powerful white men that you're inundated with. You, you, go, you drive across the, uh, the FDR bridge or the, the Ed Koch, the Ed Koch bridge. Um, not the FDR bridge, the, uh, you know, you drive on the FDR highway. Uh, you, you pass a statue, Columbus Circle. There's a statue in, in uh, Astoria of Columbus, you know. Uh, not, not that he... <laughs> He's not a he, he's not a white man, but you know what you know what I'm saying that that he discovered America and slaughtered slaughtered uh, the native population here. Um, but you know we're just we're just inundated with images of powerful men first and foremost, but white men secondarily. Airports, right? LaGuardia Airport, JFK Airport, Reagan, Bush, Dulles, whatever. Just like worship the powerful white. It's, it's a, just another way of conditioning you to who you should be bowing down to, right? And, and I, it occurred to me too, like Ed Koch, as I drove across that bridge, uh, this was a guy who was integral. He was the mayor of New York City at the time during Central Park Five, the Central Park Five hearing, right? The Central Park Five, when when there was this bloodlust and this thirst to to uh, it, you know to jail these five innocent black and brown teenagers, someone had to pay for the 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 rape of the Central Park jogger, so the system just went to work. It just did what it does. It just coalesced and said, we've got our five. Let's break them down, get them in jail. People build their careers, right? The DA, 
all of the various people who build their careers on these high profile, especially on the high profile, not the least of which was the resident of the United States of America, the, uh, the guy in the Oval Office, Trump took out a full page ad in the New York Times calling for the death penalty for these five black and brown young men, teenagers, two of whom I've met, one of whom I've become friendly with, Raymond Santana. Uh, these men, years of their lives were robbed. They were thrown in jail. DNA evidence subsequently came back years later. Another guy confessed to it. DNA evidence proved that the Central Park Five was in fact innocent. So these are the bridges where that we're dri- you know we're driving over, you know, and 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 every single one of them, the Dulles, you know, the Dulles. If you if you, if you don't know about the Dulles brothers, all sorts of evil. Anyone real, anyone that there's a statue to, anyone whose face is on something, be it a bridge, a tunnel, an airport, a highway. There's a lot of murder that you're, that you're driving on. And then if you get stopped, you, you pull out a PBA card. <laughs> so look, th- th- this is th- these are the things that we're grappling with. But I am, I am heartened. I'm heartened by the fact that people have been in the streets and people have been making the phone calls. Uh, but we've seen the system do what it does, right? The system will do what it does. So I believe uh, like the the, the woman who filmed George Floyd's murder is now being targeted for harassment, very likely by cops. Just as uh, uh, Ramsey Orta, who who filmed um, Eric Garner's murder, right? was was harassed and and put in jail uh so yeah the 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 police will not go quietly into that good night you know and they will not accept even the smallest of uh kind of uh you know holds on their power or or anything that in any way restricts their just unadulterated power to operate lawlessly, you know, uh, whether it's like a civilian review board or uh, cutting the budget. Uh, do you remember like a couple of years ago in the, uh, in New York city, uh, maybe it was around the time of Eric Garner. I, well, I can't remember exactly. I think maybe it was cause de Blasio spoke up after, oh, I think that's what it was, right? Didn't de Blasio speak up after the, the, um, Eric Garner murder and the cops instituted a, a, a slowdown, a slow, like, like they, and it backfired because a lot of the bullshit they do where they target people for stop and frisk or for these quality of life things, jumping the turnstiles or, or, you know, these having a beer on their front stoop or whatever the hell they, you know, just basically laws that are there for them to uh, terrorize black and brown communities. Let's call it what it is, right? Just laws that are in place for them to be, to occupy as essentially a a terrorist organization that at its worst winds up in in murder with somebody's knee on somebody's neck. Uh, But the cops like slowed down, they shut down. And and what happened? And what happened? The the crime crime rate did not, (laughs) everything was fine. Black and brown people got to operate and go about their lives as if they mattered to the police, as if they mattered to the powers that be. Uh, in other words, they were ignored. Isn't that, isn't that what essentially what people are at? Like, can I just live my life? Can I just walk around without you noticing me when I walk into a store or noticing me when I walk down a street or noticing me what I'm wearing or noticing me? Like, can I just exist? So, yeah, any, any pushback on their absolute power, that's what, I, you know, I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see a lot of people, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories about the fireworks. I believe anything. I believe the police will stop at nothing because they 
do not, you know, especially these, you know, talk about a PBA card. I can't, you know, that disgusts me even more actually, because these police unions are just out of control, out of control. Just, they are straight up white supremacist organizations. You know, they, you know, they, they operate with impunity. And uh, if anyone dares to question their absolute power, they you just unleash, you know, so, so that part, you know, does scare me. And I, and I wonder what lies ahead as far as all that. But more importantly, these generations have been radicalized, right? People have been, their eyes have been opened to, in fact, what the police have been doing, what the police have been doing forever. So, yeah, my hope is that, you know, start with defunding, start with defunding the police, take those resources, those obscene budgets. New York City certainly has an obscene police budget and the militaristic kind of uh, buildup of these police departments. Los Angeles, right, has, has um, I think, like more than, half, more than half of their municipal L.A. budget is, is for the police. So these are obscene. These are obscene, and 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 then it makes you question, like, what is demo- what is democracy really? Did did we vote for that? Did did I vote that fifty percent of our budget is going to the police who are who are terrorizing black and brown communities, immigrant communities? You know, so I am heartened that the veil has been lifted on a lot of this, a lot of the things that have been going on. If you haven't already, please follow John Laster on Instagram. He's been doing, John Last is a great comedian who I've worked with for many years. And John is doing something on his social media called the John Laster Challenge. Uh, hashtag John Laster Challenge. And he basically has asked fellow comedians, friends, entertainers to talk about stories that they've had, interactions they've had, situations they've had with the police. Like one minute stories, what happened, how it made them feel. And I tell you, I encourage you just, just go, just go and, and watch the John Laster challenge, hashtag John Laster challenge. uh, And, and look at story after story after story of our fellow citizens, our, our, our fellow Americans being uh, harassed, degraded, terrorized, by police across across the country so wow (laughs) isn't it isn't it fun to be together again (laughs) oh i think it is i think it is friends um as we as we wrap up folks i i again want to uh remind you to hit subscribe on youtube uh, because we will be streaming every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Ted Alexandro Show will be going live. We'll be coming at you. Uh, so please join us every Monday and Thursday. Uh, go to the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Ted Alexandro. Patreon.com slash Ted Alexandro. Uh, you will have the opportunity to win wonderful prizes, should you get three uh, of the same character? Uh, and gosh, am I, what, what else am I, am I, am I leaving out folks? Was there, was there any other texts before we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing a text. Yes. RFK, Mario Cuomo. Yeah. All the, the Cuomo. The Cuomo of the Cuomo tribe. I would pick ice, uh, ice tea. Yes, ice tea, and or Mister T. Any of the teas, ice tea or Mister T. Twenty twenty, the teas, TNT. Oh come on, come on, TNT. Twenty twenty, ice tea and Mister T. Who? I know we want we want a woman on the ticket. We can work that out. We can work that out. But I do think maybe, you know, it probably Ice-T is more relevant now, although I feel that Mr. T has the political chops. Uh, 
and then we can figure out who who the uh, the female running mate will be. I don't know. Uh, but folks, we're going to wrap things up. This has been episode one. You have been here. You, dear viewer, have been here for, for the launch, the initial maiden voyage. Could not have done it without you. Wouldn't have wanted to. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're here um, for my retirement party and the beginning of something new and exciting. Um, this will be uh, every Monday. And as, as we said, you will be able to text me. Uh, we will do this ongoing so that uh, you can find out what slice of, of Sicilian pizza I would opt for, given the choice. And uh, again, just subscribe to all the, the, the YouTube channel. Uh, go to the Patreon page slash Ted Alexandro. Uh, like us and share us and let folks know. That is, the, uh, that is the thing that we ask of you. Just let folks know that the Ted Alexandro Show is every Monday and Thursday. Um, and yes, before I go, I would like to thank producer extraordinaire, Matthew L. Weiss on the ones and twos. Thank you, Matthew. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> and our music, uh, as always, is provided by the maestro. Pro Pro DLC. Thank you for watching, my friends. All love to you and to yours. Stay safe. Stay well. TNT 2020. And we will catch you on the flip side.